Hello, my name is Chris Gregory. I'm here in the heartland and uh, thought I'd do a quick little video on how I use hoof knives and how I sharpen them. So we'll start with this horse. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pull the shoe, uh, just clean up the foot a little bit and then show you how I use a hoof knife. <clears throat> There's nothing like a new hoof knife. And so I use a left and a right. And the reason is, is I don't have to sharpen a loop knife and my left knife lasts about 10 times longer than my right knife. So I can replace this three or four times a year and only replace this, you know, maybe once every few years. So it saves a lot of money. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up this foot. We very rarely cut clinches, uh, much more likely to pull nails out of a shoe. Hopefully I picked a good horse. Also was on a magnet. Okay, so once I have the shoe off, I clean the foot. If you don't have a hoof pick on a on your hoof knife, you can just use a regular hoof pick. But once you have that on a hoof knife, you wonder how you ever got along without it. But I want to clean those commissures deep. The horse just wanted to give me a little exercise there. All right. So we can see this clearly, I'll put that left knife away. Usually I just start knifing my frog. Just clean it up for better visual. So this frog, there's not a lot to do, but it is a little bit raggedy. So with my left knife and my right hand, I just start right here, pull up nice and smooth and twist at the top. If I don't stop, then it'll be nice and clean. Every time you stop, on the frog so if i'm cutting and i stop 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 then i end up with little chalk marks so after my left knife does that it's done it goes back in my pocket and it's done its whole job it cleaned the foot and the knife the right side of the frog so right there i'm gonna get a mark but if i can just stay smooth above it it won't show up that much and in reality that's all that frog needs okay a lot of trimming horses actually is what you leave behind so I hold my knife like I was gonna stab myself with it, anchor my left hand on the foot, and then I push the handle to the left and the blade goes to the right. So that's the motion that I use right there. I actually have a, a little bone growth there from holding hoof knives. My bars, I wanna define my bars. So I get in front of the bar right there. And then just nice, even, smooth, right around the foot. I'll define this bar right here. You do it right there. So you can see the horse fighting. I'm very aware of that. You're holding a razor in your hand. So I want to hold it in a spot where I'm not going to cut the horse or myself. So once the horse is relaxed, I can let her have it back. And we're going to move her back into the, into the mud mainly for video purposes. All right, put my knife away for a pick the foot up. We lost our nice clean surface. All right. Clean her back out. All right, so I've defined my bars. Nice and smooth. And now I can decide how much of my bar I want to take. So I want the bars to end at the same area in the front and then just take the top off the bar. And then after we trim, we'll, re, we'll re, rediscover how much of that bar we want to take. So that's hoof knife using 101. If I push the handle to the left, the blade goes to the right and I can easily get around the foot that way. Thank you all for watching. I'll do a quick little piece on how I sharpen. All right, so we just used some hoof knives and those were brand new and uh, they come out of the box. I mean, they'll shave your arm in a heartbeat. So I'm gonna show you how I sharpen them and I'm gonna use this little sharpening system that I made. So I personally make these in the basement and we'll show that to you. 
um, whenever you sharpen, you need to remember that it's almost like finishing, finishing lumber. You don't just start out with the finest sandpaper. You move from one grit to the next to the next until you get the finish that you want. So sharpening is like that. These kits come with a file if you have to do a total rebuild. And then you go from the file, you go to the fine diamond. Then you go to the super fine diamond. And then we finish up with a leather strop and jeweler's rouge. So this particular system allows you to really sharpen any knife and uh, go from, well, you can make a butter knife into a razor in almost no time. So my knives are not so bad that I'll need the file. So we'll go ahead and eliminate it for now and uh, put this off to the side. When I sharpen, I really like to, to put my leg up where I can stabilize the knife and have the exact angle that I want. So a hoof knife is really, it has an angle on one side and the bottom edge should be dead flat. So the difference between this and like a regular knife would be that your, your angle would be a V. Um, we want that to be 23 degrees. Now you can get a device to measure that if you want, and that's what they come from at the factory. But if I have 23 degrees and maintain it, it's very easy to make this thing shavable. So if you look at this knife now, I've let it get as dull as I can for this video. You see there's not much danger of me uh, shaving my arm. So I'm gonna start with my fine. I put it on my leg and I turn to 23 degrees and I push into the blade. Then I push into the blade going a little bit so I'm going in different directions, just a little bit this way and a little bit that way. Then I move from that to my super fine. And I'm just, I haven't changed anything with my left hand. All right, then I turn it over and on the back side, I just hold it flat. And my right hand is doing the same move it did earlier. So because I have the, the knife held in one spot, my right hand just has to do labor. It doesn't have to learn anything. My left hand is the one that has to hold it in the right spot. Move from my fine to my super fine. And if I push into the edge, I won't develop that wire edge. If I had gone this way, then I would develop that little wire edge. But you'll see that you won't be able to fill the wire edge because pushing into the blade has kept it from forming. So once I have that, I get a strop, and after your strop has been loaded a few times, it actually gets better. So the first 10 sharpenings, um, your strop will not be as good as it will be after you get it loaded down pretty good. So I hold the strop on here, and I push this way. That's only one stroke, but you can see that black that came off of there. That black is metal that the Jeweler Rouge is removing on a very fine scale, which is what makes it so sharp so fast. I'll just scrape it with the back. With a brand new strop, I tend to load them a lot more. Once it's been used a few times again, you don't have to do that. Now on this one, this is where I gotta change things up in my right hand a little bit, I pull. So earlier we were pushing into it. If you push into it one time, you'll cut your strop. All right, that looks like it's doing pretty good. Well, let's give her a little test here. And you can see that that's shaving my arm quite easily. And that didn't take no time at all. Oh, I lost it. So that didn't take any time at all to take it from, you know, an unusable knife to one that is razor sharp. Okay, my left knife, it doesn't need very much usually. My left knife uh, stays a lot sharper because it only cleans only cleans feet and does frogs. So I usually only start with my super fine. And it's the same thing. I just push into the blade, push into the blade. And oh, one key is I'm not pushing down really hard. If I were if I were pushing on you, you'd think I'd had like two pounds. It's not very much pressure. So the harder I press, the more I will gouge. And I don't really want to gouge into it. I just want to sharpen it. And by hand sharpening, my knife lasts a lot longer. So since I sell knives, I probably ought to encourage you to sharpen it with a four inch angle grinder. <laughs> Put my jeweler's rouge on there. This one I pull to me. You can see the black that's coming on there. 
and everybody finds that uh, one of these is easier to sharpen than the other. Some people really like sharpening their left, some people really like sharpening their right, but almost nobody likes sharpening a loop knife. All right. And you can see the hair coming off there. So, folks, that's how you sharpen a, ho a hoof knife. Let me know if you have any questions. Well, folks, uh, welcome to the arts and crafts portion of our video. So if you watched the video, you saw the sharpening kits. And basically, I make all the sharpening kits. Kelly makes the aprons, I make the sharpening kits. All American made. Um, I couldn't really read his brand, so I don't know if he's American made, but we just take uh, different different kinds of cow leather. And sometimes the ends end up just a little bit different because of that. But I try to get as many pieces out of a hide as I can. And I just have a template and I put it all together here. Draw a few lines here and there. And it's not a it's not hard work or very hard to to make the product you want if you do it right. Then I always slide it over as far as I can to get as much of the pocket as I can. So it's at all possible. And then the top. So once I have this little piece cut out, I make sure it goes good with the with whatever uh, design we decide to use on the uh, on the belt this will be the little pocket right here for the jeweler's rouge i'll make a little cut right here it makes it a lot easier to put this together with the seam all right so this is the beginning of a sharpening kit and now we'll uh, go over to the sewing machine. Whoever gets this one is going to have a little bit of branding on it. Gives it some, some character, like a tattoo. All right, so this little bit machine is, is pretty neat. Kelly is way better at this than I am. But I think I'd have done all right in the sweatshop. In fact, we call this our sweatshop. There is a gym off to my left, and so that's why. When you're down here sewing, you feel like it could be for other reasons. All right, my belt is now ready. And we'll make the actual pouch that contains all of the elements for the sharpening kit as well as a couple of knives. So this is, uh, they all come, they come in very, varying colors, varying tops, but this is the basic design. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but very usable. And I've only hit my finger once.
All right, now I'll make the pockets. Got the outside sewed up, and I just do this by eye. Only about being a horseshoe over all these years, your eye gets pretty good at judging, judging distances. And if it gets a little off, you can just say, well, that was pretty artsy. As long as it's still functional, that is the big thing here. Okay, so the sharpening kit is now constructed. We'll cut the strings off. And then I will fill it up with the goodies. And this will be ready to go down the road and make some farrier or his wife, if you sharpen the kitchen knives, very happy. Now, I don't mean to be sexist. You could be sharpening for your husband. A lot of women farriers out there. So there's a completed sharpening kit. Let's go put some stuff in it. All right, so here I have all the stuff that goes in a sharpening kit. You get a handle, goes with your file, a strop. Cody cuts them out for me. I glue the leather to them. It has two different diamond sharpeners. One is a fine, one super fine. And then this is the Jewelers Rouge. And leave it in the packaging so you can see where I got it. So if you ever need to replace it, um, you can just get a hold of the company and, and order one, or you can get one from me, obviously. And there's the pieces going into their pockets. If you order just a sharpening kit, that's what you'll get. And it rolls up nice and nice and neat and allows you to keep all this stuff contained and protected. Or if you order it with two knives, you get a little bit of a deal on the price. And the two knives will fit in these pockets. And then it's still, the belt is long enough that you can still roll it up. Have you ever seen a nice way to say Merry Christmas? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about how to use or sharpen a hoof knife, let me know. Or better yet, come see us in the heartland and we'll, uh, we'll show you hands on.